All right, so shout out to Black Sports Online for uh, posting this story. Um, you know, here, here's another video about LeVar Ball. You know, you guys know I'm a huge fan of LeVar Ball and Big Ball of Brand. And um, I'm a fan, but I'm also a realist. So I give you guys my honest opinion on the whole. It's right now the Ball family is an empire, right? They want to compare the, you know, they want to compare to suspected white supremacists like the Kardashian clan, right? But again, the, the difference is the Ball family has actual talent, tangible talent, while the Kardashians do not. They're using their race as leverage to get these damn deals. Point blank and simple. But I digress. Um, but, you know, like I said, you know, I'm a, I'm a big fan of uh, LeVar Ball and the Ball family, right? And, um... This is another great story that I want to talk about that's coming out of uh, Black Sports Online. Um, it shows that the coach for the Washington Wizards, Scott Brooks, who are going to play tonight, John Wall and the Washington Wizards going up against Lonzo Ball and the Lakers. A lot of trash talk between the two. Every time the Ball Ball says something, someone has to reply. It's magnetized. It's like, as soon as LeVar Ball says something or someone sticks a microphone in LeVar Ball's face, he says something. Therefore, in order, <laughs> the law of attraction, right? <laughs> someone has to say something, right? In response back to LeVar Ball. So um, one of the things that came out of this story regarding the upcoming game with, with the Washington Wizards and the Lakers, um, Scott Brooks, the coach of uh, the Wizards, indicated that he wished he had a dad just like LeVar Ball. And here's the quote of what he had to say. Quote, you know what? Hey, people talk about Lonzo's dad all the time. Hey, I mean, my father left me at two. I would love to have my father around like LeVar is around and talk to, and talk to him and pump me up with confidence. Brooks said, according to the Washington Post, quote, to me, that's every son's dream. And for some reason, he gets criticized. No question, he's a little ambitious at times with what he says, but he's around his son. I have no problem with that. And maybe he could temper it a little bit, but I would have loved to have my father do that. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> I've made many videos about the importance of the black family structure, making sure that when you are having, when you're starting a family that you're married to your woman, you create your foundation, you create your family, you, cre you create your structure, right? The head of the household is the male, the black male. That is the leader. That is the head of the household, right? And um, that is a person that's not only the head of the household, that is the guy that is teaching his children, right? From the ground up. And, you know, that's what I always imply, raising my children, Right? And so, as I've always talked about in previous videos, you know that 72% of children, black children, are born out of wedlock, right? 72% of black children are born out of wedlock. And it's been happening like that. It's been skyrocketing as far as the percentage. The percentage is not going to decline. It's going to continue to increase. But it's been like that since the 1960s. Right. If you study the report from the 1967 report by um, the Patrick D. Moynihan report, the case for national action of the Negro family, that's where it started. They conducted their study to find out why, you know, black children are in their condition, born into poverty, single parent homes, single mothers, et cetera, et cetera. And so. This is a reflection of today. A lot of, you know, people, black children are born out of wedlock, born into single parent households. Right. And it's reflective in terms of how they were raised. OK, so when a father like LeVar is so boisterous and so outspoken, people who were raised without their father in their household, they're not used to that. They don't really know how to react. You know, there's no proper reaction to that. Um, 
And so, you know, uh, there's many people that want to say, hey, well, you know, LeVar needs to shut up. Just shut up and let his kid play. Well, LeVar is LeVar. LeVar is going to be outspoken. He's going to continue to talk. As long as he has a microphone in his face, he's going to have sound bites and quotes, whether you like it or not. So he's going to continue to be him. And, you know, Lonzo knows that. And he's just as cool, as calm as, and as ever. And here's the thing, you know, LeVar created this atmosphere of hype around Lonzo Ball. So much so that it's to a point where right now where people are literally grading Lonzo Ball's performance game by game. So if he has a trash game, as I said before in my other videos, he's the worst player ever, you know, trash, he don't belong in the league, bust, etc. Right? If he has a good game, he's rookie of the year, MVP, Hall of Famer. So we're judging this guy, a rookie, 19 years old, on the game-by-game game level. To a point where I've heard some videos where people are comparing are comparing Lonzo Ball's rookie season to Michael Jordan's rookie season. <laughs> it's crazy. So we're comparing Lonzo Ball to Michael Jordan. That's the level of hype that LeVar Ball created for his son, Lonzo Ball. That to a point where they're comparing Lonzo Ball's rookie season to Michael Jordan's rookie season. It's crazy. But that's what LeVar Ball did. And he, no matter how you slice it, it's good for the big ball of brand. All right? Because we're still talking about it. We're still talking about him. We're talking about Lonzo. Lonzo's in the league. You know, Angelo is in UCLA. And, you know, his youngest son... LaMelo is a phenom and he's being homeschooled right now. And it looks like, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens if he's still eligible to play in college. But if not, he'll go and play somewhere else overseas or whatever and possibly become, you know, in the league as well. So overall, no matter how you slice it, we're still talking about him, whether you want to talk about him negatively or positively, as far as LeVar Ball, we're still talking about him. And he's still relevant. His name is still being brought up, regardless. And you can look at this in multiple ways in terms of how Lonzo Ball is, is dealing with this. You know, like I said, Lonzo is being judged on a game-by-game -game basis and being compared to people like Michael Jordan, which I think it's, you know, I think it's totally unfair. But it's, again, it's the atmosphere that LeVar Ball created. Right. Um, you know, but it, here's the thing. Lonzo has the opportunity, you know, out of his rookie season. Right. If he's able to get through all of this pressure that the Ball created for him, if he's able to get through this pressure, this will make him an unbelievable player. If he folds. OK. If he folds, that means the VAR balls, you know, outspoken behavior. Pretty much it was a failure. Right. And what I mean by he folds is that. Lonzo, if he if it gets to a point where Lonzo play is so bad on a game by game basis that they have to bench him and someone else like Jordan, you know, Jordan Clarkson, uh, Clarkson or somebody else comes off the bench and has to start in place of. Lonzo ball, then that means it's really, really bad, you know, uh, you know, um, barring that he doesn't have any injuries and stuff like that. If he just basically playing bad consistently on a consistent basis, then all the stuff that LeVar ball was saying about his son is a wash, right? So you can look at this from multiple ways, right? Lonzo has the opportunity to make it make it all through make it through all of this hype and all of this scrutiny that he's receiving because of his dad. He can make it through it and become an unbelievable player or fold under pressure and have someone else start for him. So we will continue to see because again, the Ball created an atmosphere where Lonzo is being judged on a game by game basis. The last time somebody came out of college like that was as far as height and being judged on a game by game basis was of course, LeBron James, nobody else is being judged on a game by game basis. Okay. in their first rookie season this year, since LeBron James is Lonzo ball, 
he's the only rookie being judged on a game by game basis and being graded on a game by game basis, whether he played poor and he's a bus or play great and he's rookie of the year. <laughs> so it is what it is. That's what he created. All right. That's what LeVar Ball created. But anyway, those are my thoughts on that family. It's been a while since I've actually uh, posted a video. I've been busy, really busy. Um, but you're still going to get content from me, whether it be, you know, once a day or once a week. My minimum to post content is once a week, by the way. All right. So I will post a video and give you guys my thoughts on, you know, and provide social commentary on, you know, things pertaining to black society at least once a week. OK, but I do have a busy life, busy schedule. Got three kids, three boys, you know, and uh, just got a lot of stuff going on. All right. But anyway, those are my thoughts on that family. Leave your comments down below about uh, the story with the Washington Wizards coach Scott Brooks. Um, and a lot of people are affected by, you know, being brought up in a single parent household and not, you know, understanding the importance of a black family structure. All right, family. So leave your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think. Until next time, family Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.